Hello and welcome to another Python programming lesson. This is your host S1 Perry and today we're going to be looking at string manipulation. So when I talk about string, what do I mean? A string is just a list of characters in order. And a character is anything that you can type on your keyboard in one keystroke. That can be a letter, uppercase or lowercase. It can be a number. It can be one of the symbols. These are all characters that we store in a text string. Don't forget your strings can have spaces. So you go, hello world, this is still a character. It still has to be stored by the computer. An empty string is just a string that has no characters. And a string is anything that is in either your double quotes or your single quotes. Okay, doesn't really matter in Python, depends on your editor. But if it's in quotation marks, it's a string, and a string is just a list of characters. So Python, as always, has a lot of really great inbuilt functions to help you manipulate strings. In the old days of coding, we had to create all this from our, for ourselves since, you know, just from the beginning, we had to program everything. But you've got lots of helper functions that'll make life a lot easier. Just bear in mind that when you're doing your coding, you can use all these wonderful inbuilt methods but please check your exam specification because exams usually limit you to a handful of basic functions that are available in every language. So let's have a look at some of these manipulation functions. So a lot of this should be f stuff that you already know. If you look over here, we've got creation. Word equals hello world, print word. Okay, we should understand that. So we're just taking this piece of text, this string of characters, and we're just storing it in the variable word and then printing it. Nice and easy. We've got our concatenation. We've got one piece of text and another piece of text, and we want to put them together using that plus symbol. So now that when we print out word, you can see it's both characters together. We can append our strings so I can say word equals hello, so the value hello is stored in that variable. But then I want to add a space to the end of this. Then I want to add world to the end of that, so I'm just adding them all together using plus equals. So when I print out that, I get the whole phrase, hello, plus the space, plus world. I can use Python's inbuilt methods to convert everything to uppercase automatically. So if you have a look here, we've got word equals hello world, print word dot upper. So we're using the dot upper function. Don't forget those opening and closing brackets at the end. And that just takes it and converts it all into uppercase. Obviously dot lower does the reverse, converts everything to lowercase. Very important function is len. Len allows us to input any sort of string and it tells us how many characters are in that string. So hello world is one, two, three, four, five, six, spaces included, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven characters. And we're going to use that quite a lot later on. So again, basics. A string is just a list or an array of characters. We can access individual characters in a string just like elements in a regular list. So again we've got our phrase hello world and you can see here it has 11 characters indexed from 0 to 10. So this is important guys. The index position always starts at 0. We count from 0 in Python. So H is 0, E is 1, etc. And that means the 11th character is position 10, which is D. So I can use that to print out individual characters from a string. Again, if word is a phrase, hello world, and I say print word, and then four in square brackets to give the index position four, that will print O, because obviously index position four is O. If I say print word minus three, it will still print out a character, but it'll do it from backwards. So for example, okay, that is position zero, minus one, minus two, minus three. See, it's jumping. Minus one, minus two, minus three, and that gives us R. 
So positive numbers work from the left, negative numbers from the right, and you can print all kinds of different characters from your text string. We can also slice smaller chunks of text from a larger string. So if you look here, we've got our hello world string, and we might want to just take a few characters from that and separate it from the rest to use. So we do that by using the slicing technique. So we just have our variable at the start here, and then we give it a start number, a colon, and an end number. So if I say print hello world 011, that'll give us the whole thing. Start position zero, keep going until we get to character 11. I'll explain that in just a second, give us the whole hello world. If I say something like print hello world one colon three, that just gives us EL. Why? Okay, so start at position one. Keep going until you get to character three. Now, when we do this, the start is inclusive and the end is exclusive. So the end is like one more character than you need. So when I say print word one colon three, I mean position one, position two, and then stop when we get to position three. So it just gives me EL. Sorry if that's a little untidy, but hopefully you get the gist of that. I can do that in reverse. I can say print word minus four colon minus two, and that will give us OR. Why? Okay, let's go back. Minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. We're going to start here. Minus two would be minus one, minus two. So stop before we get to that position. So that just gives us essentially position seven and position eight, which is OR. Minus four to minus two, not including the minus two. So minus four and minus three, OR. Okay, let's do a little bit of practice with that. If my variable word is I love Python, and I print word two, I print word minus six, I print word colon six, I print word 11 colon three, I print word minus two colon minus three, what's it gonna print out? So I've got the whole string down here at the bottom for you. Pause the video, what do you think it's gonna print out? And then I'll just display the answers briefly. Okay, and we're back. So the first one will give us just the L. So position two is just the L. Minus six will give us the capital P for Python. Word colon six will just say I love. So go right from the star all the way to here and then stop. Print word 11 colon 13 will just give us on. So obviously there is no 13, so it'll just give us 11 and 12. Obviously it stops at this point. It stops one before the number that you give, so let's give us 11 and 12. And print word minus two colon minus three will just give us O. Again, if you think about that, minus one, minus two, so it just ends up giving us this. So minus three is position 12, which is N, but we're not including that because it's exclusive. So it's just gonna give us that position, which is the O. Being able to loop through strings, just like you would a list or an array in Python and check each character is a key skill. So if you have a look at the example here, this is a bit of code that just works out how to count how many spaces are in a string. So if we have a look here, it says text equals input, please enter some text, number of spaces equals zero, pretty simple. And now I'm gonna loop through that whole piece of text. Whatever piece of text they've entered, I'm going to check using the for loop in range zero comma len text. If you remember, len text, this key section here, is just looking whatever text I've typed in and working how many characters it is. So go from zero to the end of the text means check each character one at a time. So for example, if I type in this is some text, for loop and range zero comma len text will go through each 
character one at a time all the way until the end. It takes each character from that string so I can examine it. Next line, if text loop equals, and then we've got space in the quotation marks here. So remember, text loop is just going through each character. It means look at the first character, position zero. Look at the H, position one. Look at the I, position uh, you know three. And go through right until the end. Look at each character. So text loop is just each character in turn. Is it a space? If it is a space, add one to the number of spaces. At the end, once the loop is finished, Number of spaces will tell us exactly how many spaces are in that piece of text. Okay, so that basic framework is really useful. You can check for vowels, for consonants, for all kinds of other things, nice and simply. Okay, just before we finish, I'd like to go on to ASCII, American Standard Code for Information Interchange. ASCII is the basis for the system your computer uses to represent text. So, for example, the capital letter A on your keyboard is actually 01000001, which for us is 65. So, remember, your computer doesn't know what an A is or a B is or a pound sign is. These are all just binary sequences for the computer. So, A is 65, or obviously the binary value. So, some questions in your exam will rely on you being able to convert between ASCII values and the character they represent. If you do get a question like this, it'll always give you a bit of extra information because it's kind of an advanced level question, but you need to know some basic techniques. So you look here, this is the kind of standard ASCII table. You don't have to memorize this. If they require this in an exam, they will give it to you. And most of this you can ignore because it's just special characters. But if we look here kind of from value 32, so kind of this bit here, so we can kind of ignore that bit. And you can see 32 is a space, 33 is the exclamation mark, etc. Zero is 48, and we've got all some of the numbers and things that we need. And then over here, we've got A, capital A is 65, lowercase a is 97. Okay, so for example, Z down here is 122 in ASCII. So this is useful because if we can convert numbers, ASCII numbers into characters and characters into ASCII numbers, we can do a bit of manipulation. So the question here is how do we convert an uppercase A and a lowercase A and vice versa? Well, if I know that capital A is value 65 and I add 32 to that, I get 97, which gives me a lowercase A vice versa. If I've got a lowercase a, which I know is a value 97, and I subtract 32, that will give me an uppercase character, which is 65. So in Python, we've got a couple of special terms that we need to be able to use, special keywords. We've got the ORD function, and we've got the CHUR function. ORD simply converts a character to an ASCII value. ORD is short for ordinal, so it just means a number value. So if I say ORD and then A, lowercase a, in quotation marks, that will give me 97. I could print that, I could store it as another variable, but ORD will convert A into that ASCII value, which is 97. If I do ORD on a capital A, it'll give me 65. Remember, your lowercase and your uppercase are different. They have different binary sequences, different numbers. Sure, as I said, goes from ASCII to the character value. So if I say ch 97, that will return lowercase a, chur 65 will give me uppercase a. This allows me to do some kind of interesting things. If you look at the last couple of examples. If I take the character lowercase a and I convert it into an ASCII value, that will give me 97. If I then add 3 to that, that will give me 100. I can then take that 100, convert it back into a character using chur, and the ASCII and the character value for the ASCII 100 is the letter lowercase d. I can also convert between uppercase and lowercase using this old fashioned method. So, going to take a lowercase a. I convert it into the ASCII value 97. 
I then subtract 32 from this to give me 65. I then take that 65, convert it using chur into a character again, and that will give me the uppercase A. And I could kind of reverse that. I could say ord uppercase A plus 32, convert it back to a character using chur, and that would give me 97 and a lowercase a. So I convert between uppercase and lowercase. So this is a little bit more difficult. In the exam, they would give you a, you know, a couple of lines of information just to explain that to you. But you might get a harder question asking you to do a little bit of manipulation using ASCII values, not just using things like dot upper and dot lower. Okay, so that's everything I'm going to cover in today's lesson. It's a bit longer than I meant. Um, again, any questions, please let me know in the kind of comments down below. I'll try and get back to you. Good luck with your studies.